Hi everyone, Machwe here. I'm the CEO of APIS. I'm so happy to see that we have so many participants attending our two free webinars today. I think it's amazing that so many people from town have found time to join these webinars. Um, today we have a guest speaker, Anders Cruz from VMware. Hey. Hello, welcome. How are you? How are you? Anders, is that correct that you've been working for APIS a long time ago? Yeah, that was a long time ago, back in the days, 20 years ago, I was a trainer at APIS, that's true, yeah. Good. Nice to have you back. Thank you, Thank you. nice to be here, yeah. yeah. Good, I appreciate that. Uh, before starting this webinar, we have um, some practicalities. Um, we have a moderator today, uh, Martin. Hi, I'm Martin, and I will be the moderator for this little webinar, which means I will be the one taking in Questions. You can put questions to Anders, who will be presenting in a few moments. And uh, in order to do that, you should use the Q&A button at the lower part of your screen. There's an interface with a Q&A button, and there is also a chat button. I'd prefer it if you use the Q&A button. The Q&A, that's for questions and answers. So if you do that, you can ask Anders questions. Uh, there is uh, time set aside at the end of this talk, uh, 15 minutes or so, for, for questions and answers. But also, uh, perhaps, if, if it's appropriate, I'll lift some of those questions actually during um, this talk. So, uh, go ahead, Q&A us. Okay, cool. Great, cool. Thank you very much, Martin. So, I'm going to leave it to you now, Anders. Cool, thank you. So, uh, the story of me behind um, uh, the... SDN that I now work with is that I was representing uh, different kind of box vendors when it comes to networking and security. So I've been to uh, networking and security for quite many years, but I realized some five years, five years ago that SDN, this is something that will come and will be a hot topic. So I figured that I should dig into this. So here I am five years, five years later doing uh, SDN for software defined environments. So uh, the topic of today is that we should uh, describe what is SDN, Software Defined Networking, and especially SDN by Overlay, which is the main thing that most of the uh, vendors are using. We'll also talk a little bit about SD-WAN, so Software Defined Wide Area Networks. My favorite way to present SDN is to just um, um, picture a uh, data center without SDN and see what, how we get networking and security. And then we add SDN to that data center and we see what happens, what, what's, uh, uh, what's problems we solve and, and what things that gets a little bit uh, easier to do. And I, since, uh, again, once upon a time, back in the days, I was an APIS trainer, so yes, I used the whiteboard when I can, so I figured, what the heck, let's do a whiteboarding session. So, here we go, here are my pens, and th there's actually a specific grip here, the APIS, APIS grip, where you have the pens like this, I'm not sure if I use that today, but never mind. In a data center, imagine a data center that is virtualized, but it's not virtualized from a, a networking and security point of view. So it's a, it's a virtualized data center from compute point of view only. That data center um, kind of looks like this, let's say. So we have a bunch of physical servers. These servers are virtualized. So they are running some kind of virtualization software that could be vSphere ESXi, or it could be KVM, or in theory it could be anything, of course. But um, let's say it's ESXi, so the hypervisor is ESXi and is managed by uh, a vCenter environment. So in such an environment, there is a vCenter. So here is the vCenter, here is the server team managing this environment. Okay. From a networking and security point of view, in this environment installed into your hypervisor, there's a software switch. And this software switch is, is very rudimentary. So it's basically a software patch panel. And the only thing that this virtual switch will do, if you don't have a SDN, is basically take the workloads that I have in here, 
So these are now workloads, and with a workload I mean a VM, but also it might be a container. The workload has a VNIC. The VNIC is connected to a port group, so these are connected inside of the virtualization environment like this. But from a physical point of view, what we have is that all our hypervisors using typically two or four physical interfaces, they are connected to the backbone of your data center. So in here, this is my switch, switched and routed environment provided by some hardware from some vendor. If we have two VMs communicating in this environment, there's no SDN so far. So maybe this VM here is sending traffic that is being picked up by this VM. This is my example right now. This means that if I need a stretched switch, then that has to be provided by the physical network. If I have these two VMs on two different broadcast domains, these two VMs needs to be routed. That router has to be somewhere in the physical environment. If I need any load balancer, then that load balancer uh, must be somewhere. And if I need some kind of firewalling, then the firewall has to be somewhere. The way we keep things apart is uh, in the traditional legacy data centers that we use networking things. Networking is how we keep things apart. And this is how we create the communication between. It doesn't matter in the legacy data center if this is a virtualized environment running VMs or if it's running hardware uh, boxes or bare metal things. We do networking and security the same way. Traditionally, this is how we, this is how we do it and this is how it has been done. So in this example, all my port groups basically maps to a bunch of VLANs. Uh, and if these two VMs, in my example, are on the same broadcast domain, I need to have a stretched switch. If they are on different, then I need um, a router somewhere. If there's a load balance between the services, I need a load balancer and, and firewalling, as we said. OK, cool. The problem with this approach isn't that this approach doesn't work, because it does work. We have been using this approach for uh, decades, and uh, it's been proving to, to work. But the problem is that we see different drivers towards a couple of things. So one of the main drivers, one of the first examples at least, is automation. So up here, let's put a, a couple of drivers, automation. So automation is a driver because the way we consume this more and more is by having cloud management portals from, from some vendor. For the sake of the argument, it doesn't matter if this is uh, VCD or VRA from, uh, from VMware. It might be OpenStack, like an open source. It could be ServiceNow. It could be, it could be something. It doesn't matter for the sake of the argument, meaning that there's a lot of, there's a lot of users here, or here are my users. And these users, they consume by pressing something in your cloud management portal. We refer to it as blueprints. This means that when they press something, that something basically shoots a couple of API calls to the, to the virtualization uh, environment that you have. And a couple of things is spun up. And those things need compute. They need installed software. They need some kind of storage. But they also need networking and security. So we would very much like to create networking and security in a software-defined environment, the same way that as we consume and create storage and compute. Because if we can do networking and security the same way, then we can also create networking and security at the same very second when someone needs it. So when we create the VMs with the storage, we create a network and security, and it's being ready for consumption the very second that you press whatever you press uh, in your blueprint, right? OK, cool. So imagine that this is a data center, and a traditional data center typically has virtualized compute. It has virtualized storage. But we would like also to add networking and security. Because if we can virtualize all of these entities, then we have what we refer to as an SDDC, a software-defined data center, where everything, everything that is logically 
anything that is logic is created in software. And you can consume it, you can copy it, you can use it, you can throw it away without any limitations, basically. The product from VMware that does SDN by overlay, the name of the product is NSX. So if you want to SDNify your data center, what you do is that you install an NSX controller and then you upgrade your virtual environment with, uh, with NSX functionality. What happens then in, in real life or in, in your environment is that in those switches, we will upgrade the functionality of the switches because we said that the switches, they are very rudimentary, they are very simple, they are a patch panel in software, but not anymore. We will upgrade them to do very much more functionality. So we will install what is referred to as a tunnel endpoint. It's an IP address in the switch. And from the physical point of view, we just make sure that these IP addresses can talk with each other. And what they talk is a tunnel protocol called Genevi. Genevi stands for Generic Network Virtual Encapsulation. There's also another protocol that is called VXLAN, and these two protocols, VXLAN and Genevi, basically they do exactly the same thing. Both are standards from IETF, and in the latest release we use Genevi we used to use VXLAN in previous version. It doesn't matter, it's a layer two tunneling protocol. So if we take the same example again, I have a VM here talking to a VM over here, let's say. Instead of using VLANs and trust the physical network to provide the switching and the routing, load balancing and firewalling needed when these two entities are talking to each other, what I do is that I instead send the traffic within the tunnel, like this. What happens now, what happened now was that we are hiding basically the logic of the virtual traffic when sending it over the physical fabric. Uh, we have decoupled everything that is logic within the virtual environment from the physical, physical environment and that's that's actually the whole point. So this is the fabric. The fabric is coming from some vendor, any vendor. If it's fast enough, then we are good to go. The job of the fabric is to be a really fast and reliable highway. And what you do in the fabric is just interconnecting in my picture now, one, two, three tunnel endpoints. That's the job of the fabric right now. The job of the SDN is to create the logical topology consumed by the VMs. So if, if my example, if my use case is that I have two VMs here and they are on the same broadcast domain, I will create a stretched switch in software in my SDN. Even though the fabric might be on layer three, this might be a routed fabric or a switched fabric, it doesn't matter. As long as the fabric can interconnect my three IP addresses, I'm good to go. If I need routing between my VMs because they are on different broadcast domain, then the routing functionality is all over. This is in software. This is provided not from the physical network, it's provided from the hypervisor where the VMs are running. It's created in software. The same goes for load balancing and the same goes for firewalling. I could actually create basically any topology of my choice in any way I like and I just bring that to my VMs. My VMs consume that, but none of this actually happens in the physical world. So in my picture now, this here, This, my red rectangle here, this is my software defined network. Kaboom. In this red rectangle, I can create any topology, any number of VLANs segments. I can route them in any way I like. I can add services such as load balancers. I can add services such as uh, different kinds of firewalling, I can do any topology and I can copy that topology. I can copy it a hundred times in individually and independently consume these hundred copies. I can create a network, use that network for 30 seconds and then I throw it away and once I've thrown it away, 
it's gone. It's not leaving any, any networks behind. And the same goes for security. It doesn't leave any security policies behind. OK, the next driver, if you have an SDN or if you have a data center, then most probably you're not having only one data center. This is my main data center, let's say. So this is my data center one. But I also have, let's say, a, a data center two. This is my disaster recovery site, let's say. Maybe I would like to cloud burst to AWS or to Azure or to the VMC from VMware or any other cloud that supports this technology. If they are interconnected one way or the other, that is fast enough. Of course, the overlay, the logical SDN overlay won't get any faster than the physical underlay. But again, we have removed the, all the logic from the underlay and then put that into the overlay. And that's, that's the whole point, actually. So if I have the possibility to have compute elsewhere, so I have a secondary site with some hypervisors. I have the possibility for compute maybe in a public cloud as well, one way or the other. Then what I can do is that I can stretch my SDN to be also where I am not managing the physical infrastructure still my logic, it's still my SDN, it's my VMs, they are consuming my logical networks that I have created, they are consuming my security policies, they keep their security posture, it's a single pane of glass, even though I put stuff into someone else's infrastructure, such as Amazon or Azure, to take two popular examples. So the second use case, the second driver maybe I should say, is what we refer to as application continuity. Continuity. With application continuity, we mean that if you create a network or an application that consumes network, those networks that you have logically created, they should be available all over the logical environment, even though you don't own it necessarily physically and manage it physically yourself. Sometimes we refer to this as bring your own network and bring your own security. Because I can now place compute resources or, or compute stuff. So I have workloads running here somewhere even though they run in someone else's infrastructure, they will still consume the same logical topology. And if I need to move stuff from one data center to another data center because of lack of capacity maybe, or because of a, uh, a sudden disaster, I need capacity elsewhere. I do not have to create a physical replica of the physical network because the VM doesn't care, the VM will consume everything it's needing will be provided by the hypervisor, including networking and security. So I can now create something from the blueprint. That means that I spin up a couple of things. Those things could be placed wherever I like, them, whatever it makes sense to run this compute as of, of this. So within my SDN, I can create basically any topology and any number of those topologies and treat them basically the same way as you can treat VMs. You can copy them, you can delete them, you can snapshot them, you can move them around the same way as we treat software compute, we can treat software defined networking and security. When this was designed some, some six, seven, eight years ago, my colleagues at the time at VMware, they realized that, okay, uh, we are of course bringing in the networking part, switching, routing, load balancing. But we also need to bring in security. So security, that's definitely a driver. Higher and more precise security. In a legacy data center, your firewall is typically somewhere and as we said before, 
the way you consume security in a legacy data center is by using networking. Networking is your tool to force your workloads towards the security posture that you want them to have in a legacy data center. The reason for this is that you need to have them in different broadcast domains or in different VRFs to keep them apart. And when you need them to communicate, there has to be a firewall in the legacy data center. That firewall is an appliance, either it's a physical appliance or it's a virtual appliance. It doesn't matter. It's a position in the network and you need to get the traffic there in order to get that functionality. But if you have SDN, then also the security is distributed. Because we said that the SDN brings you switching, but not switching, just switching, it's distributed switching. If I create a layer two domain, that layer two domain will be available all throughout my SDN. If I create a router that routes between switches, that's a distributed router. So it's a routing functionally, functionality that exists all over my SDN and can route between different segments wherever that is needed. The routing is performed where the VM is, not where the router is. And that's because we run it in software. We can do that, we can perform that routing where it's needed rather than where the VM is because the, the, the router is, is in software, right? Same goes for load balancer, you can create load balancers and you can create them wherever they make sense to have. But from the security, what we did was that we put the security even one story higher up. So the distributed east-west micro-segmentation firewall has the firewall enforcement symbolically here. So I do like this. And what I mean by this is that the distributed firewall, distributed load balancer, distributed firewall. The distributed firewall means that you can create security policies and you can, uh, uh, using a, a number of different attributes to say that this particular VM belongs to a certain security group or multiple security groups. And then you create security policies to dictate what those security groups are allowed to do. And that firewall enforcement will not be a position in the network. It will happen where the VM is. So if this is my VM, this VM is sending traffic in and out. The firewall enforcement for that VM will be between the VNIC of the VM and the port group the VM is connected to. It's a transparent firewall, but it's very much not an access list. It's a fully blown, stateful, state-of-the-art layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, and layer 7 firewall that performs any type of firewalling of your choice that makes sense for this particular workload. Uh, it's distributed, it's transparent, and if something happens, let's say application continuity, something happens with this hypervisor or, or with the entire site, so you have a site failure or whatever, you can now, if you want to, move these VMs to wherever it makes sense, wherever you have compute resources, because the VM will move there with the compute, with the network and with the firewall enforcement. This is my autonomous little thing here that I create in software. Doesn't matter if I do it manually or if I do it from my uh, cloud management portal, I can create, since I have everything in software, I can create everything at one go and I consume it as a software. And everything that this VM needs Compute, storage, network, and security will be provided by the software of the hypervisor where this VM runs. So this means that if you run out of capacity and you need more capacity because of whatever reason, it's a pay-as-you-grow kind of environment because you don't need to throw away your old firewall and bring a bigger one. What you do is that you bring more compute resources. So if I bring one more of these hypervisors, I add a piece of 
compute, and that compute can run not only the VM as a compute, but it can also run the storage, the security, and the networking. Okay, so now that when this has been um, this has been around for quite many years now, and uh, it's it's proving to be stable. We have tens of thousands of customers using this in production. So it's, it's an established technology, SDN is, is really here, and it's perfect if you have multiple clouds, so you have a multi-cloud environment, or if you have a hybrid cloud environment, so you consume not only your on-prem stuff, but also from the public cloud, you possibly, probably would like to have a single pane of glass to avoid doing, um, doing uh, uh, islands of functionality, so si a siloed environment where things work differently. So, so far, what we have is that we have a fabric. The fabric is partially managed by you, partially by someone else. The way that you connect your different physical locations is by layer three. Thus, you don't have to stretch any layer two on the physical fabric. That will be stretched by the SDN. So on the physical fabric, you place your SDN and SDN I think the correct way to, to see the SDN is to see the SDN as the networking functions here. So the distributed switch, the distributed router, the distributed load balancer. And I think that the security part should basically be something that in a sense, even though I'm messing up the picture now, I realize that, but this was my SDN, we said, and this is my security, the security layer. Because as we see, modern applications and the design of modern applications from a networking and even more from a security perspective is by not using infrastructure attributes such as the IP address or something like that. Instead, typically modern applications are using security tags. The reason for that is that you can have not only one security tag, you can have 5, 10, 20 security tags describing the full posture of your workload, including networking and security. And the software that this VM is actually running will perform whatever these security tags means from a, in this case, security and networking point of view. So I can tag my VMs with a couple of security tags these tags means that I have a security posture designed by me and that security posture by having my security policies it will follow me even though I am run over, I'm moved over here and I run over there or if I take a copy of this one and I place that copy here I'm using the same security policies and therefore I get the same security posture. SDN has been around for um, quite many years, it's very, um, it's very uh, commonly used and more and more companies are seeing the value of having the ability to create networking and security at, at just a click of a button somewhere and there's no lead times, there's no ticketing system, everything just works. You create it without of lacking any security and without, without having to wait for, for VLANs to be created and without leaving VLANs behind and security policies when, when stuff disappear later on. Uh, our customers typically see that as a great value, of course. So SDN by overlay means that there is a physical underlay that should be a good underlay from some vendor that uh, creates uh, switches and, and routers or whatever you choose. Um, it might be a multi-vendor approach, it doesn't matter, because the job of the underlay is to be a highway, and that highway you run your overlay on top of. Everything else is created in software and consumed by your, your virtual environment. Another trend, different trend, is that we see this behavior also on the VON side. This is SDN. SDN is for data centers, typically. Software-defined networks is something that happens in data center because of automation, because of security, because of application continuity. But we see a similar trend also on the VON side. So if we look at SD-VON, there's a way, of course, to describe that as well. 
So, of course, being this APIS trainer, I will use my whiteboard for this as well, or my pen and paper. Okay. So imagine that, let's say that you are a, you are a company of some kind, and your company has a uh, main data center. And maybe you have a secondary data center, your um, a backup site or, or secondary site or whatever. Uh, you maybe have some kind of office somewhere and a smaller office somewhere else. Maybe you have a, a factory somewhere in the world. So there are a bunch of physical locations that needs to talk to each other. Doesn't matter for the sake of your argument if they are big or if they are small, they need to communicate. So these sites, these physical locations, are somewhere in the world, but they are under your management, at least from a logical point of view. These locations, they need to communicate in uplink. They need to talk to the other physical locations. And available is different kinds of networking um, technologies. So one of them that you, at least in the um, legacy case, are using is a technology called the MPLS. So one way to interconnect stuff is that you go to a service provider and you buy the MPLS service from them. Another alternative is to use internet. And of course, there are internet providers, multiple different internet providers. Of course, there are technologies such as 4G, 5G is around the corner, and maybe there are some others. It doesn't matter for the sake of the argument. So we have a bunch of physical locations that we um, manage. Those are using one or two or a couple of the available technologies in Uplink. So we would like to consume this, but we would like to consume it in the most optimized way and with intelligence. So one way to look at this is that we say, okay, so what I have on the inside here, that's my Vaughn side. Someone else provides that to me. I buy that as a service. Or for that matter, maybe I have some kind of fibers of my own that I use, but it's an uplink thing in interconnecting my physical locations. On the outside here, this is something that I manage. So this is my different lawns but I have lawns on multiple physical locations. Okay, so the solution from VMware here is called VeloCloud. And the first thing that you have in VeloCloud is something that we refer to as an edge. The edge is a piece of software. The edge software might run in a box, then it's a physical appliance, but the edge software may run on a Linux kernel or on a hypervisor environment, just as a VM, it doesn't matter, it's the functionality that I'm referring to now. The edge is typically the border of your lawns here, and the edge is connected to one or possibly multiple of these different technologies that we have here in, in my picture. So maybe it's looking something like that. It doesn't matter. What we have now is uh, that we have multiple locations. We have a variety of different bandwidth um, alternatives that we, may, uh, that we may use. And we would like to use this as good as possible. Uh, first of all, from a topology point of view, uh, the sd will create any kind of topology here on, on the SD1, so between the different physical locations that you have. So if you would like to have a partial mesh or a hub and spoke or a full mesh or whatever topology you would like to have, this is software, you can create any topology. Of course, it's ciphered and safe and, and all of that since it's running on, on, on an overlay. But an SD1, an SD1 is very much more than just a managed IPsec environment. The sd also includes a lot of intelligence. So one of the things that the sd will do is that it will monitor the quality of all the provided 
uplinks. So the Estevon, the Edge software, oops, here's an Edge without the connection. Here we go. Maybe that's like that. So the Edge will, from a quality uh, aspect, will monitor all the available uplinks. Of course, uh, bandwidth, but also latency, jitter, packet loss, uh, bit errors, uh, and, um, and typically quality uh, things to just uh, have a, 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 a picture of what is the quality of all individual links at every instance in time. So if the link is silent, there's no traffic on an uplink, we will probe continuously that uplink. If we have traffic, we will piggyback a quality report on the traffic that runs on that particular link. The result is that at every instance in time, the edge software will know exactly the quality of the uplinks. And now when we start to use this, uh, this environment of ours, so we have a bunch of applications here, talking in my first example to other things in other places, then what the edge software will do once this application traffic hits the edge, is use something we refer to as deep application recognition. Deep application recognition means that we look at the destination IP address, we look what the certificate says, we look at the layer four protocol, we look at the burstiness of the traffic, so we see if this is some transactional service, is it a real-time service, is it a voice stream, is it a video stream, what, what is this? Depending on then how we have created our profiles, the profiles will put the traffic on either of the links, the link that has the best quality to support whatever the application is trying to do. And if the application is a transactional service that needs a lot of bandwidth, we can actually, we can actually aggregate bandwidth so imagine that in my example I have a gig link and another gig link, then I can actually provide a two gig link to an individual edge, even though the individual uplink is not two gig, I can still provide a two gig um, service, depending on how I created my profiles. The Estevan also um, has a lot of error corrections. So if we see that we have unstable links, we try to error correct. If we see that we are having bit errors, in my example, maybe on both of my uplinks, then if I have a highly prioritized service, then the forward error correction mechanism, if so is needed, can send the same application on both links just to make sure that if we have a high prioritized application, we do whatever it takes to make sure that the traffic gets to the other side. Okay, so a couple of typical use cases is that maybe you would like to avoid MPLS because MPLS is a highly costly service. So one use case that we see is that we, for a specific site, let's say, or skipping the MPLS for that site, and then we just take two different internet connections, plain vanilla internet connections, and then we aggregate those two internet connections, and the quality of that link will be just as good, but much cheaper than the MPLS. We also see a lot of real-time applications consuming sd -Bahn. So for instance, if this little site up here is an ambulance, so I'm not sure how to draw an ambulance. Well, this is my ambulance now, okay. So there's a media stream here going to a hospital, then since this one is moving around, there's no 4G operator that says we have coverage all over the place. So a use case for stuff that moves is that you connect a couple of different 4G operators and 5G in the very near future and they, either of them, most probably can provide with an, an error-free connection. And the application that runs within the overlay doesn't see what underlay 4G connection that we're using. It doesn't care. And we will do the per-packet remediation depending on the quality reports on each individual link. Okay, so the 
Estevan, as we see it right now, the Estevan is a thing that uses the available bandwidth the best way and optimize that for the things that is consuming the bandwidth in the middle here. Also in an SD1, there is uh, a management. VMware in the VeloCloud solution calls this uh, an orchestrator. So the orchestrator, the personnel is here. This is also your um, uh, API proxy, your API gateway, so the orchestrator is creating everything needed by the, all of the edges that you have running out there. If you are creating yet another site, of course there's a zero touch, so I just say, okay, I would like to have another site, I ship the, the hardware or the software, no one has to be on site, more than that someone just connects this typically in uplink on the internet, and once we hit the internet, that SD1 entity will find the orchestrator. It will, with zero touch, do a pull uh, configuration and then everything is, is up to go. You don't have to have, um, uh, how do you say, IT personnel on site. You need someone to plug in the internet cable. That's the only thing you need. Zero touch. Okay, so the East-West traffic use case is something that we have now taken care of. So if something here is talking to something over here, we will use whatever available bandwidth there is. We will find the best way depending on the behavior of the traffic and everything will work. If something changes, we just use another link. But of course, every now and then we need to do a breakout as it's referred to. So imagine that we take that as an example, so this is now a user, let's say, and that user is consuming, let's say, Office 365 out on the internet or anything else that is based on internet. So now we have a, a, a scenario where we have someone on the inside of the SD1 consuming something on the outside of the SD1, where you use consumption from the LAN to the one. You need to do a breakout. There are multiple ways that we can do a breakout. The obvious one is that you do what is referred to as a local breakout. So the traffic hits the edge. The edge is using the deep application recognition and the profile from the orchestrator and treats this traffic in the way dictated by the orchestrator. Of course now, then we can say that, okay, this type of application is not going into the, the uh, sd one but we are rather doing a local breakout like this and we go to the outside. This is very much possible, but it has some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that now you don't use the SD1 at all. You do not do the retransmission, the forward error correction, the link uh, capacity aggregation, the per packet link steering and, and all of that. All of that you lose if you do a local breakout. Another disadvantage, disadvantage by doing local breakout is that you need firewall functionality at every site where you allow local breakout. Because if you allow local breakout out on the internet, then you are vulnerable to uh, reverse direction attacks. It's possible, but maybe it's not the best way. It's up to the profile. One alternative, of course, could be to do what is referred to as backhauling. So imagine now that this is my data center. In my data center, I have a very fancy, super duper, super duper firewall, state of the art from some firewall vendor. One alternative then is of course to use the SD1 to go over to my site and to my firewall and the firewall is doing some kind of firewalling according to its settings and then the firewall is the entity that push my traffic natively out on the internet. Downside of doing backhauling is that you get what we refer to as hairpinning. So the service is the user on one location, it's going somewhere out on the internet, but it needs to go via your data center. This brings latency. Uh, and also it brings uh, a choke point into your environment because your firewall will be, will be the 
choke point that needs to handle everything that goes in and out on the internet. And that's capacity and uh, latency. And at a certain point in time, you will need a bigger firewall and all of that. It's very much possible. This is just a setting in your software. But we might do another thing. That's a kind of a cool thing that you can do if you have an sd one And you can do what we refer to as distributed firewalling. Distributed firewall, uh, distributed uh, breakout, I should say, including firewalling possibly, is that. Okay, the picture is a little bit messy, but symbolically, what VMware has done is that it has placed something that we refer to as a gateway. I put a, a couple of dots every here and there just to symbolize that we have positions of breakout basically in every major data center in the world. So if I want to, this is just a software setting, I can break out on internet, not locally, not centrally, but distributed. So imagine that we have a, uh, an example, there is an application, let's say over here, that application is identified by DAR on the local edge, then the destination IP address says, okay, this is where I'm going, then if I do a distrib distributed breakout, then I will use the SD1, meaning that I use the error correction and the, and the everything that is good with the SD1. I take the SD1 as close as possible, and then I do a breakout on a gateway as close as possible to wherever I'm going. Most probably, if it's a SaaS service, it will be in the same data center as the SaaS service itself. Not necessarily, but most probably. If you do a distributed breakout, that you have um, potentially tens and tens of different breakout points in the world, then it makes sense to also use a distributed firewall service from some distributed firewall vendor. And there are a number out on the market that is supporting the SDN from VMware Velo Cloud. That means that you get a firewall portal here somewhere. Let's do it like this. So here's your firewall portal. And the firewall portal will basically dictate all the breakouts, all the distributed breakouts. But it's very simple to say if the application is this or this kind of application, then I would like to have this firewalling. It doesn't matter where you break out on internet. So sd is a lot more than just IPsec tunnels. It's an intelligent zero-touch provision kind of environment that is easy to manage, easy to expand, easy to remove. You dictate by using different profiles how your infrastructure should look like, and you can actually have that in multiple layers, like these independ independent layers. You can call it like VRFs in your sd -Von. So you can have parallel topologies consuming the same sd one environment in the same physical locations, but independently. Uh, it should create a lot of um, intelligence on how to use the uplink and also uh, consume a lot of, as we said before, deep application recognition together with forward error correction, just to make sure that whatever you run in your overlay in your sd one is protected as much as possible and runs as smoothly as ever possible without the applications from, from uh, end to end is, is actually noticing that it might be different or aggregated bandwidth coming from different technologies here on the, on the Vaughn side. SDN for the data center, sd one for the uh, Vaughn between different physical locations. Okay, cool, Martin. Where are we? Uh, are there any questions? Well, I'm here. <laughs> uh, well, uh, this you, is a, this is a kind of a nice picture, by the way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I was just it's thinking a messy, it's, it's, it's quite a messy. messy I was always also wondering uh, why you hate green so much. Uh, I don't hate green. <laughs> I just don't use this this time because this is this is happening on the fly. So. I I love it. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think everyone loves it uh, because you've been super clear and there are here's no, some green there ha now. There haven't been many questions uh, during your talk. Uh, everyone, uh, uh, while I'm vamping here, uh, go ahead ask questions to Anders. Uh, while you're doing that, I can I can ask you one question. 
and give the others time to, to put in their questions if they want to. Um, I've, uh, what you've described is you know, somewhat higher layer SDN, you could say, right? So up in hypervisor land. I've heard people talk about SDN who've pointed at like lower layer things. Now this is an SDN thing and pointing at a chunky device that you can drop on your toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, protocols like open flow, I've heard. I was just wondering, is, you know, could you argue for, is, is there a real SDN? Is this a fight in the SDN community? Or what's, what's going on there? SDN uh, is, is, is not, a, is not a, a kind of term that everyone uses the same. Anyone can say, we support SDN, just the same way as anyone can say, we, we, we have an SD-VON, and then they mean we can do IPsec. Um, SDN by overlay means that you create a logical overlay on top of the physical underlay, but you can also have SDN by scripting or by SDN by, by some kind of mechanism in the hardware. We don't see that as an SDN because it's about, it's about um, programming your physical devices. So that's, that's a fluffy hardware configuration. Um, you can call it an SDN if you like. The downside of trying to, even though that's very much possible, to, to program your physical devices to do more or less the same thing, the downside is that then it's only happening in your data center, the way you have your stuff, right? You cannot at least not use the same approach over here at Amazon or Azure or, or whatever, right? So there are, of course, there are, of course, other ways to do it. Uh, there are all sorts of script languages that you can use to program physical devices. We see our customers struggle with that approach. It's theoretically simple, but it's proven to be quite difficult to have a management portal. In this management portal, there are blueprints, and if you press a blueprint, you do 80% in software in the hypervisor, and the rest should be scripted down to your physical environment. In theory, it sounds uh, easy, but it's proven to be tricky. And we know that for a fact, because we see a lot of our customers struggle, and then they come back, and then they take uh, NSX. NSX makes the final piece, the networking and security piece, all in software also. So that's all right, so, so there are lots of things you can call all of, them, all of them STN, but yours is the best. Is that conclusion? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Uh, all right. We're, we're nearing the end of the hour and the end of the day, at least here in Stockholm. So I think this is time for Mache to sail us out of this webinar. Take it away, Mache. Great. Well done, Anders. Thank you. Really nice presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, we will have more of these free webinars in the coming time. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe to our newsletters. Uh, you can do it on our website. Uh, visit apistraining.com. You will have all the information there. Uh, for now, uh, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.